All right, it's 11 o'clock, folks, and hope you all can see me and hear me well. And here we are on our snow day. Um, I realize that the roads probably down in the valleys are probably fairly clear by now. Uh, however, we just we just hit freezing here at the house and our roads are still covered with uh, ice and slush. And so keeping it safe today and keeping it from home. Um, as uh, people begin clicking in, just thought I'd uh, give you a few announcements. Uh, just a reminder that uh, this coming Tuesday is the Feast of the Purification, uh, the day that Christ was presented in the temple. And we will have, as we always do on our prayer book, Holy Day, we have Holy Communion on Tuesday at 12 noon. So I look forward to uh, you joining us there in person at the church. Also, uh, Tuesday book study, of course, is ongoing about the seven women and the secret of their greatness. And uh, those classes are 11 o'clock on Tuesday morning at the church. And Deaconess Cynthia also Zooms it on Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, each of these are really one chapter per week and a uh, different woman each week. So uh, if you are interested at all, you can still jump in. I think they've done four, four women so far. Also, Wednesday night, Bible study. Wednesday night, we will do uh, the second and third letters. Those are uh, one chapter wonders, so to speak, of Scripture. And we will do those on Wednesday evening after our celebration of the Holy Communion. Also, uh, next Sunday during the Adult Sunday School, I'm going to touch on a topic that is uh, of very, very current interest uh, regarding our coronavirus vaccines that are now available to us. And we have two, as you know, the Pfizer one and the Moderna one, uh, but others are fixing to come online. And there are some possibly some moral implications regarding those particular vaccines. And so I and invite you to join us next Sunday about 945 in the parish hall as we discuss those and, uh, and see where our brains lead us regarding our coronavirus vaccines. All right. Well, today is Septuagesima or Septuagesima, if you are a classic Latin person, right, Ethan Bird, if you're out there somewhere. The, um, so if you will grab your prayer books, we will get started. And if you'll turn, we're going to be using portions of the Holy Communion today, which begin on page 67 in the prayer book. Um, but I, as I told others earlier, our psalm appointed for today is Psalm number 20, which is found on page 364 in the prayer book. If you'll stick your finger in that um, so you can flip to it after the epistle today, then we'll be able to read this together. All right, if you would, let's please bow our heads. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee favorably to hear the prayers of thy people, that we who are justly punished for our offenses may be mercifully delivered by thy goodness for the glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. The epistle this day is written in the ninth chapter of Blessed Paul the Apostle's first letter to the Corinthians, beginning at the 24th verse. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, be an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, 
I myself should be a castaway. Here ended the epistle. As I said before, our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 20, found on page 364 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 20 on page 364. And let us say it together. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Sion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Grant thee thy heart's desire and fulfill all thy mind. We will rejoice in thy salvation and triumph in the name of the Lord our God. The Lord perform all thy petitions. Now know that I, the Lord, helpeth his anointed and will hear him from his holy heaven, even with the wholesome strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, and hear us, O King of heaven, when we call upon thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Gospel is written in the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out, and found others standing idle, and saith unto them, why stand ye here all the day idle? And they say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good men of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is, and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil, because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. Let us say together the Nicene Creed on page 71. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, 
I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, here we are this morning as we begin this little portion of the church year known as the pre-Lenten season or the Jasima season. And today is the Sunday that we call Septuagesima. Uh, during this brief season of two and a half weeks, we focus on virtue. And the readings today ask us to consider the virtues of temperance, hope, and justice. Uh, common Prayer, a commentary on our prayer book, reminds us that St. Paul speaks quite vividly about temperance in today's he compares the Christian struggle in the flesh to competition in the athletes that was so popular back in the Greek world. Just as the runner or the boxer restrains his appetites for food, drink, sexual relations, so that he can earn a laurel crown and win a human honor, so the Christian must govern his appetites with temperance so that he may obtain the crown of glory and see Almighty God. I mean... This doesn't mean that food, drink, sexual desire are wicked things. They are actually gifts of God, and they're good. Nevertheless, they were made for certain purposes, and to use them either more or less than the purposes require, or even apart from those purposes, certainly is a sin against temperance. The abuse of food and drink is called gluttony. The abuse of sexual desire is lust. And fasting is a very useful discipline against both gluttony and lust. Temperance is, for the Christian, really a practical expression of hope. Hope, the desire of the faithful soul for the heavenly kingdom, makes itself felt in action by the prudent control of bodily desires so that they don't become entangled in the things of this world. The opposite of hope is despair, which is born of laziness, of sloth, of spiritual apathy or boredom. The slothful neither hope for heaven, nor do they fear hell. And it's no wonder that it's the bored ones who commit the wicked deeds that so unsettle our society today. Today's gospel, the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, is actually about justice. Our Lord tells of the owner of a vineyard who hired laborers early in the morning, and then as he felt the need at succeeding hours throughout the day, more. The first group agreed to do the work for the whole day, for a penny. And that apparently they thought, and the owner thought, was a fair wage at the time. And the succeeding groups all agreed to work what remained of the day for whatever the owner thought would be fair. At the end of the day, the owner paid all the laborers a penny, whether they'd worked only an hour or they'd worked all day. The men hired earliest, as we well know here in the gospel, they complained that this just wasn't fair. But the owner replied, making two points. First, those men hired earliest had received all that they were justly entitled to by their agreement with the owner. Secondly, his money was his to dispense with as he wished. If he felt that it was fair to pay those that came last the same wage as the first, then it was his right to do so. In both of those cases, justice was satisfied. Justice is, is shown in our steady determination to give each person his right or his due. Justice comes from not valuable for what we do or what we own, but for what we are. Each of us was created by God for himself. And so we all have a right to whatever we need to help us grow closer to God. Since we're all equally deserving of this growth in the love of God, and we must all respect this fact, the basis for justice lies in the sanctity of the individual. Justice governs all relationships between and among people. 
and it's the basis of all social life, governing the relationships of individuals to their community, of the community to the, its individual members, and also of individual to individual. In other words, for all of us, one to another. And envy is the vice that is the most opposed to justice as it is to charity or love. For justice is the concrete expression of love. And so far as justice so often has to do the end, sorry about that, skip down the line. <laughs> but what envy does is envy begrudges another one what is rightly his. And covetousness is also directly opposed to justice, insofar as justice often has to do with monetary matters. Both vices can be seen in the reaction of the laborers hired earliest, and both are principal causes of the political and economic turmoil in our society today. And so it is that by faith, we have hope in the kingdom of God. That hope we express by tempering ourselves to remain unspotted from the world. And in doing so, we commit ourselves to bringing about his kingdom here on this earth through true justice, which is the love of God in us and through us, manifesting itself in our love for one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. I bid your prayers today for all those who are sick and suffering, remembering especially those of this place. We pray for Allison, Anne, Barbara, Carolyn, Deacon Lewis, Francis, Julie, Norm, Pat, Randy, and Tricia. We also pray for our family, friends, and others who need and desire our prayers, especially those we remember now in our own hearts. We pray for those who are traveling, remembering Allison this week. And in our provincial prayer cycle, we pray for St. Francis Church of St. Francis of Assisi Church in Estes Park, Colorado, Church of the Resurrection, Ansonia, Connecticut, Church of the Advent, Greenwich, Connecticut, St. Matthias Church in Mystic, Connecticut, and also St. Mary's Church in Wilmington, Delaware. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, especially Joseph, our president, Roy, our governor, and all those in authority with them, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Through grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially Walter, our ordinary, and all priests and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in the love and service, grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. 